Hey y'all, this is Kevin from thedietwars.com. I'm here to talk to you about some nutrition. So I'm actually gonna be doing a series called uh, Random Acts of Wrongness. And uh, basically it just documents uh, just times when people were grossly wrong about things and extremely influential people who are grossly wrong about things and uh, how this information went you know, viral or, 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 or became very widespread. Uh, in this case, it's not quite viral, but uh, it reached a lot of people and it's very popular uh, nonsense. And so I'm gonna cover it. The point of this series is uh, simply to uh, illustrate uh, what I've been talking about for a while, which is that misinformation is uh, extremely widespread online. In fact, I would say uh, misinformation has a, a, a great advantage over truth. Misinformation is novel. It um, says something new about the world and it's frequently wrong. Uh, I said it in this particular way and it, and it really resonated with people and I'm going to go do it again because uh, uh, because uh, it's this encapsulates how I think about it in a way that is appealing to others. So to become famous as a health influencer you have to say something new. The easiest way to say something new is to say something wrong. Co correspondingly, the majority of famous health influencers systematically say things that are wrong. Sadly, it's how the system works. So in this series, I'm gonna be systematically showing, or I'm just gonna be showing how this is a systematic problem, just through, through repeated examples. And in this case, this is from Nina Teicholz. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, Teicholz, Teicholz. I think Teichel's probably something along those lines. But uh, her tweet says, uh, US, first US dietary guidelines, guidance in 1977 aimed to increase carbohydrates from 28% to 45% of calories. So in 1977, we were all eating what today we'd call a low carb diet. Uh, let's just go back to how we ate in the 1970s, when obesity was below 15%. Uh, hashtag LCHF, that's low carb, high fat, hashtag diabetes, and then she gives the link for this claim. Uh, and, and a screenshot says, in the screenshot it says, increase the consumption of complex carbohydrates and naturally occurring sugars from about 28% of intake to about 48% of intake. Okay, intelligent people here. Uh, well, let's first like look at how popular this is. So it got 182 retweets. It got uh, 643 likes. And uh, Nina is followed by like 120,000 people, like four times as many people as I'm followed by. So, sorry, three times as many. So she has a, a massive platform. I think her book, Bit Fact Surprise, was, pub, was like touted by The Economist as the best nonfiction book of the year by The Economist. Um, I think she met, like, was on the Forbes short list for best nonfiction book. She, was on, she won a bunch of awards, her book. And so she has this big audience. But she just says things that are nonsensical. And, and this is one of those things. So uh, look, look here, here's the quote from the document that she used. So she says, increase the consumption of complex carbohydrates and naturally occurring sugars from about 28% of intake to about 48% of intake. Okay, so in this random act of wrongness, what's wrong here? So whenever she says uh, the first dietary guidelines aim to increase carbohydrates from 28% to 45% of all calories, why does this statement not fall from this statement? So let's read this again. Increase the consumption of complex carbohydrates. Uh, did you guys get that qualifier? Complex carbohydrates. And naturally occurring sugars from about 28% of intake to about 48% of energy intake. Complex carbohydrates, naturally occurring sugars. That's not necessarily all carbohydrates in the diet. That's just complex carbohydrates. There's other carbohydrates that are not complex carbohydrates. Right? So 28% of the diet is complex carbohydrates. But what is the total carbohydrate intake? 
because it's more than just complex carbohydrates. So that's where the, the error is, and we'll show that in like right now. Um, I'm gonna change the window real quick to uh, this other one over here. And I'm gonna close this one, and hopefully this is gonna work over here. Yeah, we got it. Cool, cool beans, cool beans. So, um, in my thread, I, I, I explain. <clears throat> so I said, this is not true. In 1920, Americans consumed about as much fat as a total percent, as a percentage of total calories as they do today. Um, and roughly the same carbs, you know? Need is misinformation, that's just, I should, I should, I'm trying to work, okay, so by the way, I'm trying to work better. I want you guys to know I'm trying to work better on being uh, nice because I often say things that are a little harsh. Now, I think in some ways they're deserved, the harshness, but at the same time, I think I can win like these battles, so to speak, over the truth, essentially. Like, I'm not trying to win just to win. I don't care about winning to win. I, I'm okay being wrong. It's like fine being wrong. I'd love to be wrong because whenever I'm wrong, I learn something. Being wrong, identifying where I'm wrong, where I'm wrong is 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 identifying where I have to, where I can learn something new. And I love to learn, so I love to be wrong. So I want to be wrong. I want somebody to show me where I'm wrong. Then it's like a great opportunity. That's my attitude about it. So I want to be wrong, but this is kind of a battle in the sense like this is her, she's clearly wrong here, and and I want to show that. And I can show that, and I can win that battle without necessarily saying nasty things to her, which I kind of say something nasty here, but I want to kind of like roll that back and, and, and say, in some, in some ways, like say I'm working on it. So I said, recently I said, I think many people have noticed I've cooled down a bit over the last few years. I think that's true. At least I hope they have. I hope you guys have noticed what I've noticed, essentially just in my head, but uh, I'm going to work on that, uh, doing that a little bit more. Uh, I'm still gonna call people out, but I think I'm gonna try to be much more, much nicer and more civil in the way that it destroy them. Now this 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 tweet is kind of a little tongue in cheek, like it's fun. It's a fun tweet because I want to be nicer and civil in the way I destroy them. But I, I mean it. Like I, I I want to win these battles in a nicer way. So I, I I want to say like I'm working on this and I shouldn't have tweeted that she's incompetent. So I said Nina's misinformation is not just incompetent. I shouldn't say that. But uh, it is harmful and it is harmful and I should have said that and that's uh, that's something I. I think it's a har very harmful, this is harmful stuff. It undermines our ability to think factually about the causes and solutions to the obesity epidemic. So if we can't think about what, you know, cause the obesity epidemic, we can't think about what the solutions might be in a rational way, uh, according to the actual, fa the actual facts, then we can't actually solve the obesity epidemic. We need everybody on the same page and to be thinking in accordance with the facts. And once that happens, then we can have public consensus about what policy is. And then we can agree. So actually people who spread misinformation about obesity policy and about obesity are actually contributing to the obesity epi epidemic by preventing us from arriving to consensus about the causes and the solutions and then being able to act on them. So it, misinformation about obesity actually prevents us from solving the obesity epidemic by preventing public consensus and support for the proper policies. So, she's, so Nina in, in this sense is contributing to the obesity epidemic. Yeah, and then I get snarky. I said, imagine believing everyone was eating a low-carb diet until the dietary guidelines happened. It was a popular tweet, like people liked it, but I should be like more professional. And I'm gonna try to be more. It's a, you know, it's a good thing. Um, and then this one guy, uh, it says tweet is unavailable. Did I get blocked? Mm. Oh, I didn't get blocked. Let's see what happened. So she, so I think this guy says she said nothing factually wrong, and then I said that actually she did. Um, here it says increase the consumption of complex carbohydrates and actually current sugars from about twenty eight percent of energy intake to about forty eight percent of energy intake. Yeah, they say that in the document, but that's complex carbohydrates. Again, it's not all carbohydrates. 
And so what Jenny Roberts says, and she gets it, she bangs, she hits it right. She says the current diet, meaning in 1977, is characterized as 46 carbohydrate in the in the guideline document you linked. So, the document that this guy linked, showing that Nina was on a point and correct, actually it show, shows that she's wrong. It says 23% um, of the diet is complex. Wait. Ah, yeah, yeah. 23% of the diet is complex carbohydrates, or 22%. 6% is naturally occurring sugars for a total of 28% complex carbohydrates from plus natural sugars. But all carbohydrates also includes refined and processed sugars, right? It doesn't just include the complex carbohydrates and naturally occurring sugars. It includes refined and carbo complex processed sugars. And that's 40%, 46% of the diet is, is that. So... The, the problem here is I think Nina knows, how she has to know this, she knows that we, we weren't eating a low-carb diet before the 1970s. It's weird to think about that. I'm like, do you really believe that? Like, does she believe that? I don't know. Like, it's... It's blows my mind. She wrote a book on this. And she's written about dietary guidelines, and she's written about, like, everything all the way back to, like, the colonial period. How, how Americans ate. She should be an expert. I'm assuming she is, and I'm assuming she just didn't forget. It's a weird thing. I don't understand how she wrote that, how she tweeted that, but whatever. It's like, so I said, um, in response to that one dude, I think I've muted, that's why it says the tweet is unavailable. I said, she misinterpreted increasing complex carb from 28% to 45%. From the same document, it's clear that carb intake was 46%, and the goal is to reduce refined carbohydrate intake. We're not talking. We're not eating a low carbohydrate diet before the 1970s. It's just silly. People ask why I get angry online. I say it's because basic fact checking and critical reasoning and scientific integrity uh, could keep these false claims from being disseminated. It's not helpful for people to be misinformed. It actually keeps us from solving the obesity epidemic, as I pointed out. And then here's just my mind blowing. Like Ginny says, uh, the crazy part is she even links to the actual guidance where you can clearly see is that it is recommending increasing complex carbs and a decrease in refined carbs. Yeah, check it out. So the next line from the one she highlighted is reduce the consumption of refined processed sugars from by about 45% to account for about 10% of total energy intake. And she says it's not an increase in total carb from 28% to 48%. It's like, it's so misleading what she's saying. And, and I, I just don't believe she's that dumb. I, I don't believe she's that dumb. I don't believe she's this dumb. So I'm, it's a little confusing, like why she would write this. And so this is why this is part of my uh, Random Acts of Wrongness series. It's like, we're gonna just talk about stuff like this. It's like, how did people like tweet this stuff? Like, you're an intelligent person with like a master's degree from a prestigious university. I think she's got a Columbia journalism degree, doesn't she? She's got like a, a journalism degree from, I swear to God she has a journalism degree from Columbia. <clears throat> yeah, she, she has a, a, a uh, she has an undergrad from Stanford and then uh, she did her master's at Oxford, right? So, so, it's just confusing. And yet, it got like 200 retweets. It's very popular. It's like, oh, everybody, let's share this. Because, um, you know, it's new. And it, it affirms people's biases. So, that's my random... Uh, after wrongness. Uh, we didn't eat a low-carb diet in the past, like, like before the 1970s and the 1980s for the dietary guidelines that never happened. But um, yeah, but uh, it's claimed that we did and that's wrong. If you, <laughs> this is why, okay, if you, if you wanna hear like just random acts of wrongness, like random things that are wrong, but it's not too exciting. It's just like, what the hell? Like how did this, how did this person say this? Listen to the random acts of wrongness series. Otherwise, just listen to the other podcasts. Um, but we're gonna be doing stuff like this for the Random Max Wrongness series. So, and again, I'm gonna be trying not to rant and rave every time I, I uh, hear somebody say something silly like this, 
but uh, um, yeah, so it's not gonna be as entertaining as it might have been if I was gonna rant and rave about it, but it is what it is, so I'm just gonna say ridiculous stuff, but I'm gonna talk about ridiculous stuff in a deadpan. If you like it, keep uh, keep listening. If you don't, just listen to the normal podcasts. Uh, this is, you know, Kevin Bass out. Check out my uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at Kevin and Basket, E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. Check out my Patreon at the same. If you're gonna become a patron, send me a message on uh, Instagram or Twitter. It makes it easier for me to get, get around to answering your questions. You can also become a top tier patron and talk to me about once a, once a, once a month for about you know 30 minutes. 45 minutes and talk about whatever you guys want to talk about uh, that's related to the stuff I, I, I present on and I talk about in my videos. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, check out my podcast at the Kevin Bass Show, rate, review, let me know what you think about it, let me know what I can improve, let me know uh, what I'm doing well, uh, share this stuff, retweet it, comment, do all that stuff. Hope you guys liked it. Um, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.